Hello and welcome to this mini gym brought to you by the Association for Elderly Medicine Education. My name is Richard Thompson and this mini gym is entitled Pitfalls of Surgical Diagnosis in the Elderly The Art of Turf War. Here are your learning outcomes. In essence, to take what you already know about the acute abdomen and translate that into the context of the elderly patient, apply that to a focused clinical assessment and show it in the way you document your findings and make that referral. So let's imagine a case. An elderly lady with comorbidity presenting with confusion and some abdominal symptoms. She can't give you much history and she's pretty smelly. So, what's going on? In reality, this case may often be sold to you as a UTI and there are dark forces drawing you to this diagnosis. It's common, you've seen it before and you know how to treat it. But UTI can be a dangerous diagnosis to make on insufficient information and I would commend you to the Myths and MSUs mini gem in this series. As you will recall from the atypical presentations mini gem, an acute abdomen in an older patient can present with vague symptoms and signs that are less than clear cut. But every day, junior doctors are missing one of these diagnoses, often because they never thought of it in the first place. Abscesses, undrained sepsis, and gut that is obstructed, perforated, or dead are not going to get better with medical management. You need to think like a surgeon. Now, as it happens, good surgeons take good histories. You need to listen carefully. If abdominal pain is the primary symptom, if there's pain and vomiting, and if the pain is constant, alarm bells should ring. It's really important to know the patient's past surgical history and I'll invite you to pause and consider why. Firstly, surgical pathology tends to come back. Think of diverticulitis and biliary sepsis. But the main reason is adhesions. These are the commonest cause of intestinal obstruction and they can trap a loop of bowel causing strangulation. When it comes to examination, end of the bed assessment is really key. If the patient looks sick, you need to find out why. Lie them flat, expose the whole abdomen and look carefully for scars and distension. Palpate and do it properly. That means eyes on the patient's face, watching for any sign of wincing which might indicate localised peritonism. If you don't examine the groins properly, you will miss inguinal and femoral hernias. And digital rectal examination is mandatory. So, get a chaperone and get some gloves on. How you document your findings shows how you were thinking at the time you clocked the patient. If you don't believe me, ask a coroner. So, this sort of thing may be okay for a patient with a headache, but with abdominal symptoms you need to record the findings, and in particular scars and the hernial orifices. Don't ignore abnormal blood results. And remember that infection is not the only cause of a high white cell count. It should make you think of ischemic or dead gut. And the same goes for a low bicarbonate. A low albumin 
while not specific, is a strong sign that your patient is sick. No one presenting with pain and vomiting should leave A&E without an X-ray. But how sensitive is plain abdominal X-ray for picking up small bowel obstruction? You might want to pause here and have a guess. In fact, at best, it's 60%, so it misses 4 out of 10, something to remember when you're engaged in a turf war. CT scanning is much better for this indication and will pick up around 80%. So, you're concerned that your patient has an acute abdomen. Your job now is to get a competent surgical opinion, fast-track investigations and an early decision on surgery. Surgeons like direct language and you stand a better chance of being heard if you can say what diagnosis you suspect and why you need their input. Do this well and notice how quickly you get that CT scan and a consultant opinion. It might be helpful here to pause and reflect on your own past experiences of making referrals. Consider what we've covered in this mini gem and imagine how your next referral is going to sound different. You might even grab a friend and do a role play. Your ability to diagnose an acute abdomen and make an assertive referral may literally be a matter of life and death. Frail old patients can and do make a full recovery from emergency surgery. Now the surgeon may get the glory for resecting this piece of dead gut but often it's a junior doctor that has made this happen quickly. So, get your thinking head on Assess the patient carefully. Remember the next person reading your notes could be the coroner. And don't be afraid of surgeons. Speak their language and they'll know that you mean business. So, thank you for watching and please do take a look at the other mini gems in this series and join us for the debate on Twitter.